May naririnig ka ba? Ako rin, wala. Because we're using Noctua's NHP1, its first passive cooler. No fans, no noise. At hindi pa siya mainit. What's up, Internet? Reviewing Noctua's first ever passive cooler, the NHP1. First things first, Noctua sent us this item for review but had no say in what we had to say about it. So what's a big deal about passive cooling? And what do you get with no fans? No noise. Another benefit is that since there's less air going through the case, there's less dust build up. Also, the design of the NHP1 is a bit different from other CPU coolers in that the fins are more widely spaced apart which allows easier cleaning. Finally, fans are another potential point of failure in your rig. They could fail, become noisy, you have to cable manage them, you have to figure out where you're plugging the darn things. So overall, eliminating fans eliminates another point of stress and hassle from your build. Noctua intended the NXP1 to be a purely passive setup, which means no fans of any kind. No fans on the CPU cooler and no case fans either. They have an extensive list of cases that they recommend as well as a long video describing how to set up a purely passive system. In their testing, they claim to have run an i9-11900, a furnace of a CPU, with just the NHP1. It's very unlikely though that you'll be using this cooler in a purely passive setup. More likely, you're interested, you're curious about the technology, and you want to try it out, but you'll have a regular case with regular fans. This is my way of explaining why we didn't follow instructions and why we decided to try the NHP1 not with one of the recommended cases of Noctua. So we used the Fractal Design Define R6 case, which we've used in our other cooler cases, as well as the Ryzen 3 3100, which is a good entry-level CPU. And what we like about this default setup that we have is that we can compare the performance to other coolers that we've tried as well. So even though we didn't follow Noctua's recommended build, how did the NHP1 do? Long story short, quite good actually. At the stock speed of 3.6 GHz, the AMD stock cooler, which is no slouch by itself, hit a maximum temperature of 71 degrees. With the NHP1, the max temp was only 66 degrees or a 5 degree difference. At the overclock of 4.2 GHz, yes, we tried to overclock with the NHP1. The stock cooler hit 82 degrees versus only 75 degrees from the NHP1. Kaya ni NHP1 mag overclock. But we're not done because Noctua also sent over the NF812X25LS PWM fan, which is the recommended companion fan to the NHP1. This PWM version of the NF812X25 has a maximum decibel level of only 12.1, so it's quite quiet. Plus, it's PWM so you can control at what temperatures the fan kicks in and at what speed. So you can preserve the quiet nature of the NHP1 until you really need that gust of fresh air from the fan. With the A12X25 installed, we saw further drops in temperature. At 3.6 GHz, which was the stock speed, max temp hit by the NHP1 was only 61 degrees or a 10 degree difference from the stock cooler. At the overclock of 4.2 GHz, the NHP1 managed an impressive 70 degrees or a 12 degree difference from the stock cooler. We're still not done though as regular viewers will know that we tried to get an extreme overclock of 4.4 gigahertz from this setup. Not all coolers can manage the extreme overclock of 4.4. The stock cooler can't and unfortunately the NHP1 can't as well. Even with the A12X25 the NHP1 could not deliver a stable overclock at 4.4 GHz. At first, I was a bit disappointed about that, but to be fair, the NHP1 wasn't designed to do anything like that. In fact, it's impressive that it even managed a stable overclock at 4.2, which is already around a 15% performance increase from the CPU stock speeds. So how do I feel about the NHP1? It looks like a toaster or a Soviet-style era apartment building. It is also a bit bulky, so you'll need to check the clearances in your case. But the signature Noctua cooling performance is still there, Noctua is still 100%. The NHP1's gains were significant over the stock cooler, and I was impressed that it even managed a decent overclock. If we had followed Noctua's instructions on what case to use and on how to set up a purely passive rig, then I'm sure that the NHP1 would have shined even more.
it's not for everyone. But if you're the type which likes quiet or sleep with someone who does, then you should definitely consider Noctua's first ever passive cooler, an impressive implementation of a fanless CPU cooler. Thanks for watching. And thank you to our top fans. Na afford na namin tuko puan nato. De joke lang. Thank you to Leah Magnaye, Ian Meru, Richard Ongkinko, ITX Addict, John Ruben Ocha, Christian Espinosa, and Rafael James. Thank you for supporting the channel.